Do you wake up in the morning feeling like a rusty robot that needs WD-40 applied to every one of your joints? Yes. If you can relate, you've come to the right video. I spent 30 days stretching my body and increasing my mobility and I learned some surprising lessons. Enjoy. Hi, you little docazoids. Yeah, I'm in a gown. No biggie. Hey, I've decided that I'm sick of this BS creaky body that feels like it's been hit by a bus when I wake up every morning. For 30 days straight, I'm going to stretch the sheezer out of this chassis to see if it can help. So, quick reasons why. It sounds so obvious now, but I've heard you need to train your joints in their full range of motions to keep them working properly. The same way that we lose muscle if we stop using them, we lose movement if we stop using it. I'm not a doctor, professional athlete, or a rubber band or anything like that. I'm just a girl sitting in front of a camera asking you to watch me work on my mobility. Okay, comfort is for wimps, girl. Challenge accepted. For 30 days straight, you will religiously do stretching and mobility stuff in an attempt to improve your overall health and well-being. And let's face it, the only way that you'll stick to this is if you're making content out of it. I honestly can't express to you how embarrassing it is to have a camera at the gym. But I'm just going to suck it up. If someone looks at me because I'm talking to you, then that's my problem. So the rule is that I have to do a minimum of 15 minutes every day. And that can involve any sort of combination of yoga, stretching, mobility, long holds. Not a long hold. And even any sort of deep tissue massage I can do with this weird little red double ball that I own. But here's a little secret for you. Are you ready? I actually decided to make this video when I was already seven days into my stretching. Lucky I have proof of that or you'd never believe me, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm so, so glad I've got the proof. So what I'm saying is everything from day seven will report on actual progress. So just bear with me, okay, please? Just do me a little favor and, and keep watching until the end. Okay, it's day one of stretching. Actually, technically it's day seven, but it's day one for the video. Focus on me, please. Hello. Okay, focus. Let's get into it. Now I know what you're thinking. Is she doing the splits? I mean, does she even need to get any stretchier? The truth is, I, I, I've, I've naturally got a good flex, okay? But this is a process about trying to create consistency with it and trying to eliminate some of the mid-30s pain that I've been dealing with. Plus, I'm still learning to make videos. Look at how terrible at it I am. Okay, girls, another day, another gym sesh. Let's go. And by gym sesh, I mean stretch sesh. That's what we're, that's what we're documenting here. Good morning. You know, I've actually, it's day nine. I've actually woken up feeling not perfect. I'm still a rusty tailgate. This is my new morning neck drill. Fancy, isn't it? So these mid-30s ailments that I've been complaining about Ow. are particularly spicy around my neck area. And I recently came to this realization that I never really move or twist or shake my head in any way that would actually be really helpful. This would 100% be contributing to the consistent discomfort that I feel. You have to move your neck. You have to! Dan Go, this guy from the internet, says that the neck is one of the most important parts of your body. And I guess that's because it's like your head pole. And did you know that our brains are actually pretty heavy? Mine is anyway. Just imagine the weight that our neck poles are holding. This neck spurt says that you have to move your neck, otherwise it will go stiff. And that doing so consistently could change your life. So I'm onto something. I call this one the exorcist. And because my neck is so out of whack, the experience is actually even creepier than it looks. I'm hearing crunch, 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 Having this realization about how messed up my neck has actually become made this experience at this theme park make a lot more sense. There's no support. The chair was up to here and it took off and I was like... And I couldn't lift my head up. For a about 10 seconds. Yeah, I think Giraffe. You know, I've just been thinking the whole reason I'm kind of doing this is to create, is to set that habit, is to get that habit going. I've been exercising for years, so my baseline is very high. So if I miss a few days or a week or whatever, it's not hard for me to get back into the routine of exercising because I'm just, it's just ingrained in the noggin. But with stretching, my baseline's very low. I just do it so inconsistently. It's never been something that I've prioritized, so my subconscious, my conscious just doesn't really care about it. By doing it every day, I'm creating patterns in my brain that make me feel like I need to do it. It's part of who I am. It's part of my routine. The same way that I've introduced tongue scraping of a morning. I didn't used to do that, but just this year I watched this video of how many toxins are on the tongue. Gross! So I just scrape them off each morning. Same with flossing. I didn't used to floss, but now I do it every night. I created that habit and routine 
by the way, this is the best tooth floss. It's called Man Floss. You get it's Australian, manfloss.com.au. But I'm not gonna promote it too much because hopefully I can get them to sponsor me one day. But it is a beast of a floss. By day 10, I was kind of all about training myself into good habits. Because every morning I am procrastinating so hard from going into the gym. But if I'm just sitting there like this on my phone, why wouldn't I just get out the door and use my phone while doing something more active? It's these little bits of action each day that compound and make life better. It's just about training your brain. And if you need to be creating content like me, like this, just to get things done, go create content. For example, my comedian friend David Boyle was a raging alcoholic four years ago. And when he finally knew that he had to quit for good, he decided that the only thing that would keep him disciplined and sober would be recording a podcast every single day. And for four years, he hasn't missed a single day of recording. There was even an episode where he was sick in hospital with a collapsed lung or something, and he recorded the podcast. He's a beast. Oh, and importantly, he hasn't drunk a drop of alcohol since he quit. He just drinks a lot of tea. But maybe this is just what people like me and David Boyle need to fire up our discipline. Some sort of purpose or reason. Someone to talk to. Success. Finish today's stretch. That was... Some sort of reward system to motivate you to keep going. My reward system for this habit that I'm setting is creativity. I get a story out of it. So, I don't know, you're welcome, I guess. So, so this morning I've woken up, day 16, and I am so stiffy stuffy. I don't know what causes it. I've stretched every single day for 16 days and I'm still like a rusty robot. I did have an osteopath appointment yesterday but surely that doesn't just make my whole body turn into a rusty robot. I don't know if this video is going to prove anything. So I'd woken up with this stiff neck and I knew I didn't have Viagra stuck in my throat. So I decided to turn to the only person who I thought could console me. Another David, the osteopath that I'd met the week before. On day 16 of my stretching, I was recording and I was talking to the camera and I had a, just a really stiff neck and a twinge here and it was the day after I got the dry needling done with you. Okay. So was that your fault? Was that my fault? <laughs> my, I mean... <laughs> It's normal to have a reaction yeah. to treatment, which can last between 12 to 24 hours, 36 hours maybe. So what I'm doing with the needle, you find the tender point in the muscle, mm -hmm. you put the needle in it, mm -hmm. that provokes some micro trauma or pain. So that then produces inflammation, which is the start of the healing process. That's what the dry needle is doing. Okay, so if you have an injury, it's not healing itself you might need to assist it. That's what, that's what it's doing. So it's pro-inflammatory. Quite incredible. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Okay, so that was some fun facts on dry needling. Now some fun facts on stretching. Did you know that there's actually a connection between your brain and your nervous system and the muscles that you're stretching? Because in our muscles, we have these sensory receptors called muscle spindles. And each time you stretch, they send messages to your brain to be like, Okay, is it okay if we go this far? And the brain's like, mm, I don't really trust you because you've not done it before, I'll let you go this much further. And then the next time you do it, the brain gets the message again and they're like, okay, I'm familiar with that, I'll let you go a bit further. And that's when you get, like you stretch and you're like, oh, I can't go anymore because you haven't trained it enough. And that's why when you stretch, you need to do 30 seconds or, or, or more long holds because then it trains your muscles to stretch more. So that's just a little science lesson. That's all that was. Every day for the rest of the experiment, I just felt better and better. And I can say in good faith that the stretching motion is absolutely the body's lotion. Okay, and that is a wrap. That was 30 days of me stretching nonstop, religiously, every single day without fail. And here are the things that have changed or I've learned or have gotten better in my life. Number one, I'm sleeping better. I had such issues with pillows and everything was so uncomfortable sleeping. But now I get into bed and I can move around all I want and I'm so much happier. That is a result of the mobility. Move your neck, guys. Number two is carrying a bag. I carry this backpack around with a laptop in it across the world, across London, across Sydney, wherever I am. And it's always painful. I always get this pain in my shoulders. But now, it actually, it's much easier. I feel stronger. I feel like it's not pulling on all these muscles, which probably just needed a stretch. In fact, not probably, 100%. -y. Number three is exercise. 
I can move so much more freely at the gym. I did an 8K run the other day on the treadmill and I was just so fluid. It was amazing. I've not felt like that in a long time. Honestly, it makes such a difference to how you move when you, when you work out. Number four, I don't know how to title this, but this is actually day 35 and I stopped stretching three days ago. So for three days, I haven't really stretched. It makes such a difference. Like I have been stiff and feeling uncomfortable and I went back to stretching and I already had the ability to move further. So it was easy, but I could feel the fact that I hadn't stretched for three days. So it does become a habit that you do need to maintain. Number five, speaking of habits, is I've learned a lot about myself and what is going to drive and motivate me to create habits. And it's going to be different for everybody. And finally, number six, I am riding around on the highest of high horses now. If anyone has any sort of issue like, oh, my headaches, mm, stretching, not sleeping very well, stretching, have cancer, stretching. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I am planning to post more videos and if you like what you see, well, it's only going to get better from here. It took me so long to record that outro.